everybody who's joining. We got Alexis and Deb. Um, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Just give everyone a chance to come into the room. Hi, Isaiah. Mike. Welcome, everybody. They will start in a, probably about 631. Isaiah, she turned your camera. <laughs> How are you? Doing good. Oh, let's see. We have Deb in a, in a it looks like on a plane. <laughs> All right. Um, it's 631. Why don't we get started? So, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Reapy. Uh, I graduated from Oaks College in 1991, a computer engineering major. And um, I am a past president of the Alumni Council. I'm, I'm really pleased to be here tonight. I serve on the UCSC Alumni Council with Surreal. Uh, the Alumni Council is the board of directors of the Alumni Association, which hopefully you're all members of. This is, uh, you know, we, we um, support the 130,000 alumni out there. Um, and the alumni, we support the edu educational calling of UC Santa Cruz. So alumni counselors like Surreal and myself, we're, we're volunteers. We provide leadership for the Alumni Association uh, and work to support the UCSC community. So we will have questions uh, at the end and plenty of time. Feel free to add your questions uh, either in the chat box or once we open for questions, you can, you can use the raise your hand feature if you prefer <clears throat> that lets me call on people um, in order. So chat box or raise your hand, whatever you like. Uh, we do ask everyone to stay muted until they're called on to avoid background noise and distractions. This event is being recorded, so if you prefer not to be on the recording, feel free to turn off your cameras uh, and you can always watch this later. We'll post it on our YouTube channel. Uh, so it is my pleasure uh, to introduce Surreal Brookins as your presenter today. I have the privilege to work along her, alongside her, as I said, on the UCSC Alumni Council. She graduated from Stevenson College in 2019 with a BA in Intensive Psychology and Critical Race and Ethnic Studies with an emphasis on the African diaspora. She was very active in her time as a UCSC student. Surreal was a member of the Martin Luther King Jr. Convocation Planning Committee, Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, Critical Race and Ethnic Studies Student Working Group, Humanities Undergraduate Student Committee, Student Health Outreach and Promotion, and the Rosa Parks African American Themed House, and many more. Surreal's worked in higher education as a student success coach and academic advisor, and now serves in human resources and equity work. Surreal has a passion for reminding students like herself that it is possible to attend and graduate from UCSC and keep a strong connection with alumni. Surreal, thank you for sharing your expertise with the UCSC community. I'll turn it over to you now. Whoops, I was just muted. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and good evening from the East Coast and good afternoon on or early evening on the West Coast. Um, as Mike said, my name is Surreal Brookings, and today I'll be facilitating a workshop on ways in which you can foster belonging in your life, not just for yourself, but also for others. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge the land that I reside on here in the state of Maryland. Um, it's Anacostan and Piscataway land. So fostering belongingness in one's life is not necessarily always easily attainable and it can be directly related to your life satisfaction. And so my question to you today is how do you ensure belongingness in your life for yourself? And how do you ensure belongingness for others in your life? So the goal of this workshop is really to identify and examine a few social factors that may impact your life your friends' lives, and address how you can incorporate belongingness in your day-to-day -day interactions. We'll achieve this through self-reflection, 
some group reflection, and honesty. I'll do my best to make this as interactive as possible uh, via Zoom, because sometimes it can be hard to read the room, but the more you participate, the better. And showing your video is not necessarily required, but it is strongly encouraged. So once I've finished the workshop presentation, I'm really hoping that all of you, hopefully, uh, will walk away today with a better understanding of yourself. So with that being said, a few of the goals of today's workshop is to one, learn what belonging is, understand why it can hold a lot of importance and hopefully you'll learn why it should hold importance in your life, as well as reflecting with yourself and with others on the impact of belonging in your life and what you allow for. Issa Rae is one of my favorite actors. Uh, she's a writer, she's an activist, and she's a moving force in the Black liberation movement. And my favorite quote by her is, all of our journeys are unique. And I wanted to start with this because it's really important that going into today's workshop, we remember that all of us do have unique and very different journeys. However, we can all really do our part in fostering belonging for ourselves and for others. So. I'm not a professional in belonging. I don't have a PhD or a master's in belonging. However, I do think it's important that I let you all know that I'm speaking on experience and a bit of background research. But of course, I wanna provide y'all a really brief overview of today's workshop. So first and foremost, I'll go over a few community agreements. And these are just some agreements to consider when moving throughout the workshop and when participating and sharing things. Next, I'll talk a little bit about me and then I'll learn a little bit about you. And then we'll go right into belonging. What does belonging look like? What does it feel like? And then I'll kind of transition into why belonging? Why does belonging matter in the first place? Why should it even play a role in people's lives? And then lastly, I do want to dive a little bit into belonging in your life, how to foster that in ways that I actively practice that um, and how you can also practice that and do that with others as well. And once I finish that part of the presentation, I'll open it up for a Q&A. But of course, the Q&A doesn't have to necessarily wait. As Mike said, you can drop questions in the chat at any time. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some community agreements. And I'll briefly go over each um, that are listed. So a lot of the time when discussing diversity, inclusion, and social justice topics, community agreements really aim to create a safe space for participants, so for attendees. And over the years, social justice educators and activists have actually really come to realize that there's not actually a way to ensure someone's emotional or physical safety in a space um, or their comfort. So with the work and efforts of trainers and organizers who have been doing this a lot longer than myself, uh, there's been a move to create a to go from a safe space to a brave space. Um, again, because you can't necessarily guarantee that everybody's gonna feel safe. Um, and that can be kind of hard to achieve in a space where you may not know people. So that being said, community agreements for a brave space is what I aim to present to you all today. So the first one is controversy with humanity. Uh, this is pretty much an update from the original controversy with civility. And this can have a disproportionate, disproportionate impact on marginalized people who are often expected to behave with civility, even when their humanity or their identities are being questioned. And this agreement, you can think of it as a replacement to agree to disagree, which can still allow particularly those with uh, certain advantages um, in society in a conflict to retreat from discomfort. And it also implies that discussions are about winning or converting somebody to a side or convincing people to change their minds, which really isn't the point. The point is for people in a controversy to understand one another with humanity and dignity, whether or not they come into agreement. Next is on your intentions and impacts. Uh, this kind of replaces the no judgment zone and don't take it personally because these can often protect the comfort of majority groups at the expense of target group members. So remembering that it's not necessarily about your uh, intentions of what you said or why you said something, but more so the impact. So being mindful of that is really important in participating today. Challenge by choice, but with mindfulness. Uh, in summary, there's a difference between, I don't wanna share because it opens me up to discrimination 
And I'll be uncomfortable if I share something because it'll expose my dominance. So just being mindful of why do I not want to be challenged in this space? Or why do I not want to discuss certain things? Respect. Oh, sorry. Yeah, respect. Um, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? Just being mindful of respecting folks in the space and ensuring that people are respecting you is important in today as well. Challenge ideas and actions about their humanity. So try not to have shame or, or defensiveness or embarrassment because it's really hard to learn and grow in those sorts of states. So remember, if somebody brings up something, don't say, well, that's that person and they're terrible. Think of it as like, I'm wondering where that person came from. Like try and make it more of a conversation. Uh, confidentiality, what takes place in this space stays in the space. Um, so please don't share names and, um, you know, take people's business out of this space anywhere else. And last but not least, um, learning best happens just past your comfort zone. So today I'm not asking you to jump. If this is your comfort zone, I'm not asking you to like take a leap and be super uncomfortable. But do know that you can learn a little better when you are just a tad bit outside of your comfort zone. So are there any questions um, or if there's any other additional community agreements you'd like to see added, please go ahead and drop that in the chat. All right, moving on. So a little bit about me and a little bit about you. I would like to get to know one another, uh, virtually of course. So about me, my name is Surreal Brookings. As Mike said, thank you for the introduction, by the way. Um, I graduated in 2019, studied intensive psych and critical race and ethnic studies. And most of my classes consisted of either psychology, primarily social psychology, so why certain people make certain decisions because of things that happen in their life, as well as African and African-American history, cinema, um, film, and like authorship. So going to UC Santa Cruz was my very first experience with um, a PWI, and a PWI is predominantly white institution, and that was a new place for me, a new space for me, because I came from a community where a lot of people look like me, um, they talk like me, or they um, were people that, you know, I saw myself in one way or another. And I didn't, because I went from that space to Santa Cruz or UCSC, I didn't really feel like I belonged until I really found my community on campus. And that came from working with various groups on campus, um, trying to make the most of opportunities and really trying to network as best as I could. And fast forwarding to after Santa Cruz and how I've kind of tried to wiggle belonging into my everyday interactions as well as my positions. Um, and some of my previous roles, as, as Mike mentioned, I was a success coach and an academic advisor. In those roles, I joined like the leadership council, for example, because I felt that some employees didn't really feel like they belonged. And I often heard talk of not wanting to be there. So being on a leadership council really enabled me to create spaces and host events of things, things of that nature to allow for people to foster belonging and to foster it for them. I've also created mentorship programs uh, as an academic advisor as well to also create belonging and ensure that new students didn't feel so new and you know second year third year fourth year students didn't feel so um, I guess disconnected from the newer classes and lastly uh, my most recent um, belonging sort of project was a black history month initiative that I did in my current role it had never been done before but since now uh, that's happened I sparked a lot of people from different groups to want to also do the same thing for their heritage months. And I think that really contributes to their sense of belonging as well. And a fun fact, I love fur babies. I'm always probably gonna have a dog <laughs> for the rest of my life. And one of my favorite things to do is karaoke. So enough about me. I would like to learn about y'all as attendees. So if you could please click the link in the chat or use the QR code with your phone um, this will go ahead and give you the space to enter your UCSC college. I mean, what did you major in? When did you graduate? And or some fun facts that you'd like to share with me. And as you continue to post those, I'll go ahead and share the screen where your answers will actually come up.
Hello? 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 I'm getting an echo. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's causing the echo. Are you hearing the echo? Everything good? We have an avid music lover in the building. I'm also a lover of music. That's awesome. Green biology major, graduated 19, I mean, 1992, Crown College, immigrated from Canada and live in Australia. That is incredible. That's super cool. Thank you to whoever shared that. Oaks, I can't do that. I'm not from Oaks, but Oaks, business management, um, economics, 2019. Let's go. Same year. Did stand up for three months. That's super cool. Congrats to you. Class of 2020, you got Stevenson College in here. Literature creative, fun fact, a poet. We have a poet in the building, okay. <laughs> it's okay if you didn't use the link. But um, thank you everyone for sharing. I see we do have, oh, 2019. Oh, I see the same person posted it in the thing. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, so that brings me into the next section. Um, what is belonging? So when you think of belonging, what comes to mind? And this can be a feeling, this can be a scenario, this can be um, ideas, but if you could drop that in the chat, um, I'd really appreciate that because I'd really like to hear from you all. And like I said, uh, I'm trying to make this as interactive as possible. So when you think of belonging, uh, what comes to mind for you? Feeling a support network, acceptance, feeling comfortable when you walk into a space. Yeah, I like that. Everyone feels comfortable and safe. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely resonate with all of these. Um, I definitely feel like belonging. Well, I'll get into that, but I agree with these. Um, and I appreciate y'all for sharing that. And ultimately, I believe that it's kind of whatever you define it in, define it as on an individual basis. Um, so for some people, it looks the same, and for some, it looks different. But so in this brief five minute TED Talk video, author and journalist Caroline Clark. She's gonna go ahead and briefly talk about our fundamental need for belonging and how critical it is, not only to fulfill every individual person's fulfillment and success, but to our overall creative well-being and future. And what she insists is that companies, communities, and even families and friend groups should be cultivating a culture of genuine belonging in order to reach their fullest potential to truly thrive. So I'm gonna play this short clip, it's about five minutes. I've spent most of my career as a journalist exploring and advocating for diversity and inclusion. Belonging is a word that's increasingly making its way into the DNI ecosystem, where hopefully it will have great impact because it needs to. Where diversity is largely about numbers and inclusion is largely about the programs and policies created to attract and retain those numbers, belonging is something else entirely. Belonging is about changing hearts and minds. We talk a lot in our society about things like respect, community, and connectedness. Belonging exists at the intersection of all three, and our need for it is as fundamental as air. Without it, we will fail to thrive, no matter how innately competent we may be. 
according to Stanford professor and social psychologist Gregory Walton. A lack of belonging can not only have significant psychological consequences, such as loneliness, depression, and anxiety, it can actually impact a person's IQ test performance. In one Walton study of black and white freshmen in a predominantly white university setting, where there was a carefully cultivated environment of belonging, the trajectory for black students markedly improved all the way through their senior year, effectively diminishing the so-called minority achievement gap by a stunning 50%. In a similar study of women in a predominantly male engineering setting, the women's self-esteem improved. Their interaction with male colleagues improved. Everybody's morale improved. The entire place's performance up. At Black Enterprise, the company where I work, I lead a brand called Women of Power. Women of Power was created to support, nurture, and uplift women of color in their quest for leadership roles in corporate America, where, frankly, the barriers to their belonging are deeply embedded and everywhere. In the Women of Power community, our mantra is, I see you. Three words, so simple on the surface, but they've proven to have the most effective impact in fortifying these black women for the battles they face every single day. The phrase is derived from a common greeting among the Zulu tribes of South Africa, where the words sawubona, meaning I see you, traditionally invoke the response sikona, which means I am here to be seen. Taken in their totality, the combined meaning is until you see me, I do not exist. For black women and other marginalized groups and individuals who so often feel invisible, I see you is a powerful acknowledgement of an existence that is often painful and isolating. It's also code for a much deeper message. I see you. I see who you are and what you bring and what you want. I understand what you're up against and how hard you're working to overcome it. I'm here for you, I got you. I believe in you, I'll help you because you belong here with me and anywhere you aspire to be. We are living in a time of divisiveness in the extreme, in a toxic environment that stokes our fear and distrust of one another while diminishing and even dismissing our deep need to belong. Don't let it, don't. We cannot afford to cultivate or endorse a go back to where you came from culture. And we don't need 26 million more DNA tests to understand that we are connected at the root and our futures are inextricably linked to one another. I see you, and I know that you are here to be seen, wanting to make the world a better place, needing to set an example for our children, and longing to belong and to invite others to belong with you. All right, that was the brief five minute video. I really appreciate what she mentions about kind of what I talked a little bit <clears throat> about earlier, but the need for belonging and how we can foster and cultivate that, not just in our families or in our friendships, but also in the workplace, for example. Um, and just her talking a little bit about the impact of creating those sorts of cultures can uh, really help with morale in the workplace and I imagine in other places um, within those people's lives too. I so belonging oh and I was looking this way because I have two screens so I was watching the video too um, in case anybody was wondering but belonging um, I like to think of it as a sense or a feeling and personally I think it's you just knowing um, that you are an important member of a group 
two or more people, of course. And or it's a space where you don't have to explain yourself. You just simply belong. And I think personally, I can think of a few spaces and people that I'm around where I can feel that way. And it's not, oh, I think I think I belong or I think this person understands you, but it's I just belong. So again, that kind of resonates a lot with what some of you shared earlier. So a few factors to consider because belonging doesn't just exist. This is where um, specific factors do come into play. Um, and I'd like to highlight a few of those factors that should be taken into consideration when you're thinking about belonging in your own life and your friends' lives and, lives and even strangers' lives. So on the left-hand side, we have social identities, and these are going to be talking about the individual's memberships in a social group. And some of these social groups are actually part of very intentionally marginalized communities. So for example, race, gender, sexual orientation, um, ethnicity, nationality, um, ability. A lot of these can be factors going into what can help foster a space for individuals in these different groups to belong. On the right-hand side, we've got socioeconomic, this is the economic and sociological understanding of a person's, for example, work experience and of their individual or their family's economic access to resources and their, just their overall social position in relation to others. So what's listed here is education, income, position, the job they might hold, and access to financial literacy resources. And one thing I believe someone entered in the chat no imposter syndrome and something I did want to bring up was a stereotype threat. So that's when a socially premise like psychological threat comes up for someone when they're in a situation or they're doing something and a negative stereotype actually applies to that scenario. So for example, when I'm in, when I was in classes at Santa Cruz and maybe I was the only black woman in the space, I felt that, well, maybe I shouldn't speak up because I might come off as aggressive or uh, people might already be intimidated by me if I try and speak up or say my own opinion. So that's also something that can that people can carry with these sorts of factors and identities. So now that I've talked a little bit about belonging and I want you all to now kind of reflect um, and be put into breakout rooms just to discuss the following questions and I really want you all to be as honest as possible. I know we're all like new and we're all strangers, but again, I just wanna reiterate the community agreements that I had earlier. Um, so if breakout rooms can be put together and you can click join, I'll put the questions in the chat as well for you. And if anyone needs help moving into a room, just let us know. Jelly or George, do y'all need help moving to a room? I'll go ahead and join a room, but um, if this could be closed in the next like six or seven minutes. Oh. Thank you.
Hey y'all, I hope you all had a great time talking and chatting. I stopped into a breakout room myself. Um, so it was really cool to get to know a few folks and really hear like, what does belonging feel like? Who is it that provides belonging to you? Um, and also what did it feel like to not, to not feel like you belonged? And something, well, I won't get into what I shared, but I would like to hear from all of you or some of you, uh, feel free to use the raise hand feature or uh, drop in the chat, but maybe something you learned and how it felt to really reflect on those experiences of either belonging or not belonging. Um, and, you know, did you learn anything new or did you relate to anyone maybe in the group? Well, I feel frustrated actually, because we didn't get to hear from Osa before the window closed and I wanted to hear about his experience. So um, that's my share. Okay, I got it. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess uh, I'll answer the question that we both, uh, we all answered on our call about like the idea of, I guess, like when we belong or when we didn't belong. Um, like right now I'm out in Seattle, Washington and kind of like surreal. Uh, like before Santa Cruz, I came from this one city called Antioch. Um, a lot of black people, so that's what I'm used to. So going to Santa Cruz, it wasn't a huge adjustment because I was still in Oaks, so there's still a lot of black people around me. Um, and even, and everybody kind of got along together. So even when there was other races, like everybody got along. Um, I feel like Seattle was kind of like my first time. It's been in, in a different area where people truly did act differently. I mean, I feel like California has its own personality, um, but Seattle is a very different, uh, I guess, personality kind of style. Um, and I feel like I, when I first came out here, I was really trying to find my bearings because one, I'm working at a corporate job, um, which is already another adjustment. And then second is just kind of navigating this area um, while still keeping, I guess, true to myself is a, is a very interesting experience. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like this is the first time where I really felt like, okay, I really got to figure out how to, not exactly like the belonging piece, but I guess this is the first time I've actually kind of dealt with that concept of like being like me and making sure that it kind of fits with the like the new area that I'm in and like kind of going through those like conversations and like kind of dealing with that. Um, yeah, I know that's not like a like a cohesive answer. Like I've never really like thought about that to be honest. But yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I'm really sorry that folks got cut off. We are on a strict time schedule and I wish everybody could share. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. I definitely can relate. And speaking to your point, Osa, about fitting in, um, fitting and belonging are actually not the same. However, they do tend to be mistaken as interchangeable. And the reason why fitting is not belonging is because fitting you can think of as not really a genuine connection. It's more so attempting to associate yourself with others. You might change your attitudes. You might change your beliefs. You could be, maybe even change your um, attitudes on certain things just to fit in. So you can think of it as you have a giant set sign that says, accept me for who I am. And then you have the same sign written in five different fonts and in six different poster boards ready to present to whichever group or place or team that you're trying to impress. Any questions? Awesome. So why belonging? Why does it matter? Why should someone care about it? So um, I do wanna go over a few reasons, maybe about five. Uh, they're not all in all, this is why it matters, but these are a few that I wanted to cover. So nearly every aspect of our lives is organized around belonging to something and having a sense of belonging, like uh, Ms. Clark said, is so important. You got to consider the groups and the labels that we assign ourselves or that others assign to us. They can be families, spiritual groups, charities, cities, nationalities, just to name a few. Secondly, when we feel that we have support and we're not alone, we're a lot more resilient and often being able to cope with really difficult times in our lives, because who doesn't have those? Um, and coping well with hardships can essentially decrease the physical and mental effects of the situations. So I do think it's important to highlight that the sense of belonging and physical and mental health, it's kind of hard to, to like separate those. Um, and so 
along with that social ties that accompany belonging. So like I said, the social identities um, are very protective or are a protective factor in helping to manage the stress that can come from um, the hardships. Three, improve physical health. There's many studies that have actually shown that having a sense of belonging can decrease blood pressure, <laughs> enhance the bodily performance and increase the odds of recovery from surgery or let's say sickness. Um, four, potential higher self-esteem, potential for higher self-esteem, feeling good about yourself can result in, from a sense of belonging, sorry, for finding one and also providing belonging for others. And five, personal growth, thinking about who's in your circle, who doesn't want personal growth? Um, it can kind of only further your progress in life. If anybody can think of others, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Belonging in your life, um, approaches to fostering belonging for yourself and others. These are a few ways that I actively do it. Creating intentional connections. So bringing people together to create an environment where people feel they belong um, is really great. It's even better when they know it. They don't just have to feel it. It's kind of like when you walk into a space, when you're with your friends or maybe certain team members at work and you just don't have to explain yourself. So it's important to create those intentional connections. Building trusting relationships. How do you ensure trust with yourself, with others? And if you've ever thought about it, how can you know that someone trusts you and how do they know that you trust them? And so thinking about how to maintain that trust in those relationships. Asking and inviting. So inviting opinions and perspectives into the conversation and trying to ask for input on ideas from all the people in the space. Um, that's always really great and also fostering belonging. And so engaging in very purposeful storytelling and engaging, encouraging people, family, friends, chosen family, colleagues to share their individual stories because understanding specific aspects of another person's story can really help to dissolve that interpersonal barrier and help them show the many layers to themselves and the experiences that you wouldn't know about them otherwise. Additional ways, make an effort. You gotta start somewhere, so take that first step. Validation, I'm a big fan of that. A lot of times we can hear someone's experience and without realizing it, we ultimately don't validate them by bringing up our experiences and our experiences in ourselves and why they should now listen to us. So being mindful of that sort of validation. Mindfulness, again, thinking less about yourself while you're with others and allowing other people to be the focus of the group or the conversation. Attitude of acceptance, be willing to see and feel what's happening in the present moment. And that's not always easy, so having patience. If everyone could do a little self-reflection, um, it's gonna be a word cloud. You can either use a QR code or the link that is gonna be in the chat. Uh, to answer the question of how will you try to foster belonging for yourself and how will you now try and foster belonging for others? Oh, and I'll go ahead and pull that up as well. So this can be based on what you learned today. It can be based on what you had a conversation with someone today. Maybe somebody mentioned something that you've never tried before, you haven't done before. Um, just so we can, I can have some sort of sound over the silence of everybody thinking of great ways. Um, something I can think of is, oh, understanding, listening, empathizing, um, having a lot more openness, being open-hearted, absolutely. Checking in frequently. Mm, that can definitely foster a sense of belonging as well. I, I feel like people tend to be in such a fast-paced thing that when do people take the time to stop and check in? Kind of like what Ms. Clark said, I see you, you see me. And that sort of validation itself is like great. Embracing people, validating, caring more out loud. I really like that one. That's awesome, checking in. Awesome. So 
So thank you so much for sharing and participating. If there are a few things that, um, you know, that are takeaways or things to keep in mind, one would be to please put the work in to really ensure that you truly understand yourself um, and how you see others, but not only see them, but how do you include them? Even if it's, hey, I remember this time you brought up this thing, or if you notice someone sitting by themselves, and it may not, it may because they just want to be to themselves, that's cool, but checking in, like, hey, is it cool if I sit here? And then they're like, wow. I see you, you see me. Second, the amount of belongingness you provide for yourself and for others can in fact lead to healthier friendships, relationships, and just interactions. And lastly, honesty is key. Um, I say that because, you know, we gotta be honest with ourselves. Are we fitting in or are we belonging? Are we including or are we excluding? So being really honest with yourself um, in this process is key. And I'd like to close with this quote from another favorite of mine, Maya Angelou. I long, as does every human being, to be at home where I find myself. So with that being said, may you find your home wherever you find yourself and may you belong. Thank you. Feel free to email me personally. I'm more than open to connect. Um, <laughs> thank you also. You can also um, add me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty sure I'm the only surreal. So it shouldn't be too hard to find a few sources. And now it's Q&A time. So this doesn't have to be questions only. Um, it can be comments, maybe sharing your personal experiences for those who didn't get to share um, and anything of that nature. Oh, thank you. I'll maybe I'll, I'll get us warmed up uh, and because uh, I'll start with a question. So what uh, if you're in a group that maybe hasn't done this intentional exercise at the beginning to go through, uh, you know, if you have someone who's sort of open, you know, hostile to the idea, uh, you know, how can you start a conversation? Uh, something that I like to do when people are, I mean, you know, hostile to that is really come from the perspective that I was have been taught by somebody since I was young, um, which is five W's and an H. Who, what, when, where, how, why, and when? I think I said that twice, but basically that approach. So instead of it being like I said, you're not gonna look at the person and be like, oh, that person sucks and I just don't wanna talk to them or they're intimidating or whatever the case may be. I try and approach it from a, oh, that's interesting. Where did you learn that? Or why is it that you might be opposed to this? Or um, how are you doing today? Is there something on your mind? Like there's gotta be something behind all the like hostility, for example. But also this does not encourage you to get in people's face and nudge them and force them to open up. Um, but understand that with time, people can open up. Um, it just may not happen in that moment. And yeah, I hope that answered your question, but I would just say, helping people to um, unpack why that is or what's going on with them or just the I see you, I acknowledge you, you see me, keep it kind of moving. Yeah, thank you. I think maybe it's also just, you know, telling your story might put the barrier down. I mean, maybe not there and they're not openly hostile, but they say, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not being unwelcoming, but maybe that's different than being welcoming. Right. Yeah. Yeah, engaging storytelling, yeah. being open and honest, and just sometimes what you share is how much they'll share with you. So they may be like, mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah, thank you. I find this incredibly valuable, just being being intentional about the process, not taking it for granted that it's going to happen. Going going through that little step at the beginning to introduce the, you know, the, 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 the mindset. <laughs> So, and I'll remind everybody, you know, you can type your questions in the chat box. You can also raise your hand. I don't know if Surreal, if you want to, if you want me to look for the raised hands or you'd like to do that, but. Um, I think I can. I, I did want to go back up and just see a few of the chats because I noticed it was popping up and I was mm -hmm. trying to present. Um, I really liked your comment on the known imposter syndrome. I think I touched a little bit on that. Um, Mike said, if we as a society don't gravitate to that message as a whole through the invisible screen of, well, until it affects us, I'm not going to worry about it. So it's really important for us to not necessarily have the, well, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't personally impact me. 
then um, that'll be a lot easier in having certain conversations. Because the thing is, like, the more solidarity you build and the more understanding and empathy that you have for people, mm -hmm. I think that also will address, um, you know, dissolving those barriers between folks feeling like they couldn't um, talk to you or open up to you. So thank you for that. When reflecting on those experiences, I felt a little silly that I allowed myself to not belong in those time frames. Mm, yeah, absolutely. All of you, everyone here, and those who couldn't make it today are absolutely worth belonging and extremely valuable and your input absolutely matters. So if at all you ever feel excluded, it's also okay to put yourself out there and to provide your ideas or your input, especially if it adds to the conversation. Um, and like, you know, don't be shy. Easier said than done, but. Oh yeah, Cynthia. Yes, thank you. Thanks, I really appreciate it in this workshop. Um, so I have a share, uh, I'm a substitute teacher and I was talking a little bit about that in the breakout room, breakout room. So what do I do when I am inviting the kids into the class? These are middle schoolers and they tend to be some of the most, uh, you know, they're used to routine, right? And when their routine breaks, they're upset by it. You know, when, they're, when they don't see their regular teacher there, they just get the, the first thing that they say, oh, we've got a sub. And they say that right to my face right to my face. And I say to them, well, you know, I'm not just any sub, I'm Miss Hoggins. And, you know, I'm here, I'm here for you. And I'm going to do your teacher's lesson plan. You know, just as if your teacher were here, excuse me, I have tea boiling on the stove. But, uh, you know, so what do I say? What do I say when they go, we've got a sub? What's the best response? Oh, man, that's a really good question. Um, and I, it's funny, I remember being the middle schooler saying like, oh, we have a substitute teacher, let's act this way. Um, but I was a, you know, I was a good student. I try to keep people in line. However, I think uh, one of, I don't know, a personal response that I would provide um, is kind of inviting them into the conversation. Like, yeah, have you ever had a sub who share a fun fact? So for example, I've never been a sub, but I think in the middle school age, it's important that they feel like they can relate to you because I feel right. like already when they see like a teacher, well, that's somebody who's got kids, a family, this and that, all these things. I just can't relate. So thinking about getting them to open up to you. So if it's like, yeah, so I haven't met you before, whatever the case may be, what shows are you watching? I don't know. Are you on TikTok? I don't really know what middle schoolers are doing. <laughs> well, this days. is right when they come in the door you know, and mm -hmm. I'm inviting them into the classroom. Oh, we've got a sub, you know, and they turn to one turns to another and says that. And then I have to say something really fast to go, you know, you know, to, to kind of diffuse that kind of us and her type, you know, separation that they're trying to create. What, what do you usually say? Or if you say anything at all? Well, I say, I'm not just any sub, I'm Miss Hoggins. You know, I'm trying to like say to them that right. I'm, I'm a person. Right. You know, they're trying to depersonalize me by saying we've got a sub, you know, and it's, I'm being put into kind of a category. So <laughs> it's not easy to win them over. And, you know, I have to say, I have to find some statement, you know, to a comeback that, you know, that shows them that, hey, well, maybe she could be kind of cool after all. You know, yeah, I, something I found to try and connect myself, not just to youth, um, but people who are like, yo, like you're an external person coming into our space, like what's up with that? Mm -hmm. um, one of the best approaches that have worked for me so far are icebreakers. And I know that sounds silly and we've probably done it all our lives, but something that like might be creative to kids is two truths and a lie, for example. So let them come in and say, oh, we have a sub and blah, blah, blah. Come in and you start the class with, all right, well, if you think you know me so well, let's play two truths and a lie. And then you come up with, you know, I have a dog named Twinkie. My favorite color is orange and I once climbed Mount Everest. Obviously it won't be that obvious, but it might, I don't know, it might make kids laugh, like something to make them be like, oh, like that's that's true, that's so cool. Or 
whatever fun facts you have to share. And then like you allow the kids to also kind of speak on that and Mm -hmm. it'll get giggles going. It'll get laughter. It'll be like, wow, this is a teacher who allowed us to like speak up first and to um, provide knowledge about us. So that's a really great suggestion. I've never played that game before. I'm going to try it the next time I go into the classroom. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other personalize them? I see you, AKA, what's your name? Yeah, that's a good one too. Ever seen the movie Lean On Me? I don't think I have, but it sounds good. Um, are there any last final thoughts, questions, comments? Oh yeah, 89. I have not seen that movie. I'm a little too young. I'll jump in with one more quick question if nobody else does. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I work in tech. And you know, DEI B is a big, big topic in tech conversation these days. Re- retaining and attracting talent and diversity, right? So, like, I, I, I'm, I find myself thinking about how to apply this in the work world. Do you have some special hints about applying this in in a professional setting? Like, oh yeah, yeah. You mean like specifically in the tech world, DEI B, and creating belonging in the workplace per se? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, honestly, applying most, if not all the things that I mentioned, um, intentional um, conversations. And also with, with tech though, it can be a little tricky because my understanding is like, not everyone may have a background in DEIB. And so if there's not um, bias trainings, if there's not belonging workshops, if there's not team building, like there has to be some sort of aspect outside of work, 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 productivity. Am I getting a raise or not? And then continue. There has to be something outside of that that's sparking certain conversations or that's allowing for people to grow with each other and not outgrow each other, if that makes sense. So um, that would kind of be, be my approach, like really just like are those opportunities even offered? If not, who do I need to talk to to get these things up and running here at the company? And sometimes it takes even asking like an external person or place or company to come in and allow to foster places like that. Cause I know we did that at our job when I first got there. I didn't know anyone. It was like my first or second day and we had this whole <laughs> external like Jeopardy game thing that came and it was really random but it brought me a lot closer to people, so really hey, having those opportunities. I hate to, I don't want to cut off my own question, but it's, it's uh, about, got about a minute and a half left. So we better, better draw this to a close. Uh, so I, I hope everybody, you can join me in, in thanking Surreal. You can use the clapping hands reaction here, right? Uh, um, and uh, <clears throat> I, I, I just found this incredibly valuable. Like I, you know, I just asked him my question, right? I'm, I'm really, my mind's really spinning about how to apply this at, at work and to make uh, people feel more welcome in the work environment, especially newer people. So yeah, thank you. And I want to thank everybody else for joining us this evening. Yes, thank I you. hope you'll you'll look at the alumni week schedule and join us for some other events. And one in particular, I want to ch- highlight. Uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. in the Cowell College Courtyard is an event called Cheers to 30 Years. It's our, our, our beer and wine reception. Uh, Barbara's going to drop the registration link in the chat box. Um, so this, we're, this is actually celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Alumni Association Scholarship Fund. Uh, we all as alumni, we provide students who, who have a financial need with $3,000 annual scholarship t- until they graduate. A generous donor has uh, agreed to match every donation we receive during alumni week, dollar for dollar, up to a total of $30,000. So every gift you make this week to the scholarship fund makes a big difference and will be doubled. And Barbara's going to drop a, a chat in the chat box if you'd like to make, make a donation or, or join us on Saturday at four o'clock. So I hope you stay connected with your alumni association and your college. Uh, reach out to the alumni office anytime with questions and ideas. Barbara is going to put the email address in the chat box for you, alumni at ucsc.edu. And thank you very much for joining us tonight, everybody. And again, thanks, Surreal. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Great workshop.